This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh as we turn to um, history and the making in Chile, where the draft of a new constitution was presented this week that could replace the one implemented during the dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet. The president of Chile's constitutional convention, Maria Elisa Canteros, presented the draft of Chile's new constitution during a ceremony Monday. Cabe destacar It should be noted that the text we have built together emphasizes the autonomy of territories outside the center of Chile and has been the yearning of millions of Chileans. This draft captures the spirit of a new Chile, a Chile that, on the foundation of decades of efforts, is taking a step into the future. These are the wishes of millions of citizens who place their dreams and hopes in this process. This text materializes a new way of treating one another, a new way of understanding life in our country, where everyone can feel protected. The new constitution would recognize for the first time Chile's indigenous peoples, codify reproductive rights, make higher education free, require gender equality in the government, and require it to mitigate and adapt to the climate catastrophe. Not included in the draft were plans to nationalize parts of the country's mining industry. Work on the final version of the draft's underway. Chileans are set to vote on it September 4th. Some recent polls show fewer than 40 percent currently say they would vote yes. For more, we go to Santiago. Santiago, Chile. And we're joined by Pablo Abufom, member of Chile's Solidaridad Movement, an English solidarity movement, an anti-capitalist feminist organization. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Pablo. Talk about the significance of what took place this week. Hi, Amy. Good to be here. Well, this the, the first thing to say is that this finally ends with the neoliberal constitution imposed by the dictatorship. This is very important. It has been a demand of uh, social movements, of the civil society in Chile for decades. And this is probably uh, a new step in a political crisis that began in October 2019, where we had a huge popular revolt in Santiago, but in, in, in other uh, big cities and urban and rural centers in Chile, uh, when we had millions of people taking to the streets to demand the uh, guarantee of social rights and end to neoliberal policies like privatization of education, healthcare and pension systems, and also uh, gender equality and recognition of indigenous people's rights. And so this new constitution, the draft of the new constitution, is finally uh, um, a, a place where all those aspirations have a, a, a space, have a, a, are recognized. And, and this is also very relevant, because it's the first constitution that, that is democratic, democratically written. It was an elected body that is actually representative of a Chilean diversity, uh, including gender parity, representative of indigenous peoples, of social movements like environmentalist groups and feminist movements. And so we have a body that is actually democratic. Uh, that is a huge contrast with previous constitutions that were written in, in the case of the dictatorship by a small group of um, partisan uh, followers of the dictatorship, but also in the past that was written by a group of a small group of experts, politicians, lawyers, etc. And so this is a, it's a completely um, historical um, milestone for our recent history. And Pablo, could you uh, talk about what you know of uh, how much uh, support the draft constitution has? Well, we just mentioned uh, that at the moment only 40 percent uh, of people in Chile say that they would vote in favor of it. Yeah, we, we have to say that the same polls that, said, that say that are the polls that said that people were not approving the change of a constitution, or the people who said that the fascist, neo-fascist right-wing candidate cast was going to win the election, and it was Gabriel Boric, a progressive, who won. So there's not too much to, to find in those polls, but a lot of the, the aspirations of the great losers of this process, of this political crisis, uh, the conservatives, uh, nationalists, and, and defenders of the neoliberal model. So the, the actual references that we have, in, in not just the polls, but we have an 80 percent vote for a new constitution. We have a majority vote for 
representatives of social movements of independence and leftist groups in the civil society to change a neoliberal constitution. And then we have uh, a massive turnout to vote uh, for Gabriel Boric as the president, as a progressive president against the fascist uh, right wing candidate. So those are the actual facts that we have. The rest are polls that, of course, tend to be um, tend to talk more about the aspirations of the people who uh, commissioned those polls than the actual opinion of the people. And and Pablo, what about this? Uh, the fact that uh, one of the provisions was excluded, Article Twenty Seven, which would have nationalized the mining industry. If you could talk about the significance of that, and in particular lithium and the significance, the importance of lithium. Uh, to the economy in, in Chile and what that had to do with this decision? Well, Chile is an economy that is based on the extraction of raw materials. Uh, and, and mining is, is, is the main activity in terms of uh, extraction of uh, copper, and now lithium has become the new thing. And so the dispute around who can, uh, the, whether the state can have an economic activity in terms of extraction of lithium or just private companies, mostly multinational corporations that are currently mining a lot of the, the Chilean minerals right now. Uh, that's one of the main disputes. And, and it mobilized a lot of support. And there was actually a, a, a popular initiative bill for the Constitutional Convention that was proposing the nationalization uh, of of the mines and, and other natural resources. And it, I think that we have to take into account that a, a constitution is, is not going to solve all the problems. There are still a lot of things that are going to be um, part of future struggles, and the constitution opens a new political period for those struggles. So it definitely, uh, it's not, it's, the, the constitution is not enshrining nationalization, but nationalization of natural resources as a way to solve an economic crisis that is ongoing, it's definitely, and, and, and to pay for the social rights that are being enshrined in the Constitution, it's definitely on the table and it's going to be uh, a part of a political struggle in the, in the next decades, probably. And what are the plans to galvanize support? I mean, this is going to be a referendum all over the country in September um, for the